So the other day we were looking at uh, background processing, but in fact, before that we started looking at activities. So we have seen some best practices on how to create activities or when to create them. It's not like randomly I can create an activity. No. So we should first check if any existing rule forms will suffice my requirement. If not, then I will go for activities. And before creating, I should also check if any existing activities will suit my requirement. If none of it does, then go ahead, create your own activity. Okay. And on the activity, we have seen uh, it overcomes few limitations that are there on the data transform, like interacting with the DBs, then looping options, then your uh, you know, exception handling. So these kind of things are advantages when it comes to activities. Okay. We have seen, I think, a couple of methods also. We have seen a log message which is used for logging messages then we have seen call activity we have seen branch we have seen queue so how, how does the system uh, execute this call and branch so what is the difference i think we've seen all of that isn't it yes then we have a lot of other methods also for i mean of course each one for its own functionality it's not that we need to explore and implement all of it. No. When you take an enterprise application, you get to use hardly around 15 to 20 uh, methods max. But just that having an idea of each one of it is really, you know, it is good. So that when a requirement comes in, we, we would know at least like what method could be used here. So just having a an idea of each of the methods is, is really helpful. And few methods are explicitly related to DB interactions. You see uh, RDB methods are there. Then you have methods related to properties, your property set, and your, you can invoke decision tables and trees from here. Your, map values could be added, then page related properties are there. Then you have OBG related ones, which are on, uh, which are, uh, you know, methods that are operated on a single instance of each of your classes. So it could be acted upon that. Then you, know, you can advance the flow, you can, you know, start a new flow. Connect related methods are there. You can invoke your SOAP or REST connectors from this. And in fact, you can load your data page also. So earlier we have seen data pages has a source called activity, which means the activity is sourcing your data or data pages, correct? On the contrary, inside my activity, I can call a method called load data page. So here, the source is going to be a data page that is used on the activity. Okay. So the vice versa is also possible. Okay. But ideally, in most of the activities, uh, we, we tend to use the connect routes to call uh, our connectors or to invoke our you know, uh, external applications to reach out to them to receive data. So, I mean, maybe once we start looking at interact uh, integrations, we we'll look into it. But otherwise, activities are highly scalable. So you can use it across multiple uh, aspects. So you can use it as an activity. You can use it as an on change. You can use it for routing, triggers, validate. So for all these options, I can use my activity. And all of this does not come with a disadvantage. Okay? So the disadvantage is that your activities might impact the system's performance. Because looking at the complexity of each step, because it has got some loops, it has got a precondition, it has got the actual method execution, 
then it has got the post processing action and of course your step page if you mention a step page all the action is is on the step page so considering all of this complexities and um, the number of steps that you have on the activity they might impact the system's performance okay okay so then i think we'll we'll go ahead we'll we'll talk about background processing so earlier in order to deal with background processing or typically what happens in background processing is the the thing here is that the application is in control of your background processing right i mean there there is there is no manual intervention it's not like a person would sit at the system and would do it no so background processing is where your system takes control of the application when does this happen so this happens where uh i think let's let's talk about some nodes first okay what are nodes any 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 idea like what what is a node uh no i mean okay. i have heard node but not specifically okay. i don't know either. okay no problem maybe I, i'll just give you a simple example see you you use facebook right so did you yes. ever facebook going down for like Five hours and six hours. Maybe they say no. Facebook is under maintenance for the next six hours, so you can't use it. Did we ever see that? No, no. But again, Facebook is also an application, right? They will have their own versions. They'll have some bugs to be fixed. I mean, probably some maintenance to be taken care. All this are there for Facebook also. But we don't see that going down. how does this happen because maintenance is happening parallelly and then the application is also running parallelly how does it happen that's because they will have the application distributed on different nodes so that if one node is under maintenance the other node will take care of working on the application or you know keeping the application live similarly we will have background processing in an another node so that the regular applications performance or the you know the regular live application is still good it's not impacted with your maintenance or it's not impacted with your background processing so to go to you on another example so when you look at an insurance application right so where people would generally take policies then they would have a lot of renewals and or a lot of other transactions happening in the back end now for each transaction i should generate a set of documents right and when you look at a policy document it will have around like 100 150 pages with all the clauses and what includes in your policy what nominations are there okay what are your claim related uh, policy so everything is listed out on it so for each transaction i have to generate a set of 100 pages of document now this should happen for every customer right suppose today i have like 1000 customers applied for or taken a policy from me i should generate 1000 different documents for all those customers isn't it yes and this happens every single day and look at the renewals so if for a year right maybe my my policy expires within the next 7 days so i should keep on sending out reminders like your policy is being expired in the next 7 days please renew it so this should be sent for all the customers whose policies are uh, expiring in the next 7 days now can i employ a person to look at the system to note each can each uh, person's policy details and expiry details and would he be sending out emails is that even possible no not possible not possible right i i'll have lakhs of customers now i cannot sit at the system and by the time i note some some other new customer would join 
or some person would have you know he, he might have cancelled his policy so anything might have happened right so i cannot have this process manually done definitely not so when you talk about this kind of huge you know batch processing or multiple entries be taken it's when we let the system handle these things so you tell them you tell the system what should be done and it will take care of processing these details okay as part of that background processing it is generally handled on a node separately and then on a separate node other than the maintenance or other than the actual application so we we have a node for it to you know deal with this background processing now okay yes there is a separate node good but when when does this process happen i mean like any any particular time uh, frame during the day or in any uh, idea as in like when it would be done when is this background processing because when i say background processing of this batch process it, it is going to be huge so any guesses when would that be done uh when when most of the people are not working on it exactly like, exactly yes yes so we we say them off peak hours right i mean when there's not peaks. much the application so if you see if you, you know, try to log into irctc at around 12 o'clock in the night it says it is under maintenance until 2 you cannot book any tickets hit so it's it's under maintenance for 2 hours where they think probably the majority of people are not using it because it's an off peak hour similarly we we decide what what are the what are my off peak hours for the business when is that the most people there's no uh, uh, customer volume so or when there is a lesser customer volume those hours are decided as off peak hours and then we we start looking at the background process now in this two things are important okay <clears throat> on which node you are dealing with this background processing and which activity you are performing so two things are important because the base is again going to be the activity here okay so the logic the batch processing or your email uh, notification or renewal or creation of documents so everything goes and sits inside the activity okay now who drives this activity is we have two new uh, options for dealing with this background tasks two new rule forms starting from 8 we have got job schedulers and queue processors so these are being used instead of your agents so generally what agents do is they they automate the process that is earlier being manually done now you automate it okay? so without any manual intervention the process just goes on now those are replaced by job schedulers and queue processors so we'll see how this works i think we'll we'll take one or